Let's get fancy and create some luxurious styled backgrounds for your motion projects. The techniques in this video are all super easy to replicate so that you'll be able to stand out in a luxurious style. Hey, what's going on? This is Jordan with Sonduck Film. Be sure to drop a like on this video. It helps us out a ton and let's dive in. Download the project file so you can follow along with the tutorial and get a few free backgrounds as well. We'll start off by making our texture that we'll use to add a metallic effect to our circles. First, go to Layer, New, Solid. We'll set the color to a nice dark blue and click OK. Next, we'll make our texture layer, so go to Layer, New, Solid. The color of this solid doesn't matter, so just click OK. Now, go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Fractal Noise, Effect, Distort, Turbulent Displace, and Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur. For fractal noise, set the noise type to block, contrast to 300, brightness to negative 25, open transform, uncheck uniform scaling, set the width to 600, and height to 300. Alt click the stopwatch for offset turbulence, we're going to paste in this expression which you can find in the description of the video. Set complexity to 3, alt click the stopwatch for evolution, and type in time asterisk 5. For turbulent display, set the amount to 75, Size to 125, alt click the stopwatch for evolution, and type in time asterisk 100. For the fast box blur, set the blur radius to 25. Now we have our texture layer set up and ready to go. Next, we're going to set up our first circle layer and map the rim to our texture layer we just made. First off, we're going to rename our texture layer to Texture and hide it because we're just going to be using it as a map for our other layers. Next, select the ellipse tool. Make sure fill is set to solid color. We'll set the color to be the same as our background. Set stroke to none. And we'll create a nice and big circle that covers most of the composition like this. Hold control and double click the pan behind tool to center the anchor point and use the align tab to center the circle in the middle of the composition. Make sure the circle is highlighted, then go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur, effect, channel, set channels, effect, color correction, Tritone, Effect, Generate, CC Light Sweep, and Effect, Perspective, Drop Shadow. For the box blur, set blur radius to 0.3, iterations to 1, and uncheck repeat edge pixels. For set channels, set source layer 1 to our texture layer, change source to effects and mask, then do the same for source layer 2 and source layer 3. For the tritone, we'll set the first color to a soft yellow, the second color to a light brown, and the third color to a much darker brown. This should give us this nice warm golden color. For light sweep, make sure the center is at 960 by 540. Set the direction to 235 degrees. Set shape to linear, width to 475, sweep intensity to 15, edge intensity to 65, edge thickness to 1, and light reception to composite. For the drop shadow, set the direction to 225 degrees and the softness to 400. Now that we have our golden rim set up, what we need to do is duplicate it. Delete all of the effects that are on the duplicate, press P for position, alt click the stopwatch, and type in wiggle, parentheses, 0.5, comma, 15. Finally, we'll select the original, set its scale to 101% so that it's just a bit bigger than the duplicate, then parent it to the duplicated layer. Now our first circle layer is created with an animated golden rim around the edges of it. Lastly, we're going to animate and duplicate the circle layers to finish out the composition. To start, we need to animate our circles, so highlight the top circle, press S for scale, set a keyframe, move forward a bit in the timeline, set scale to 110, then go back to the first keyframe and set scale to 0. Highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, then open the graph editor tool and pull both sides of the curve to the center like this. We want our circle to bounce a bit at the end of the animation, so go forward a bit further on the timeline and set the scale to 95, move forward a bit more, set the scale to 105, then move forward a tiny bit more and set the scale back to 100. You can see I moved a shorter distance each time because that's what gives the animation the nice bouncing effect. Highlight both layers, duplicate them, Make sure that the duplicates are on the top of the layer list, then go to Layer, New, Null Object, parent the top circle to the null, and set the scale of that null to 80. Highlight the duplicated circles and the null object, duplicate them as well, move them to the top of the layer list, and set this null object scale to 60. 
Repeat this process two more times, duplicating the circles with the null, and then setting the null scale to 40, and then 20, so that we have a full stack of circles like this. Now take each set of circles and null object, and offset them by a few frames on the timeline like this so that we stagger the animation. Finally, if you look at the first frame of the composition, there may be an artifact that looks something like this, so just make sure you start the composition to be one frame in so that it skips over the artifact. And you're done! A simple but professional luxury background to use with your projects in After Effects. To close out this video, as you may know, creating motion graphics can be incredibly time consuming. That's why we've made thousands of templates to help you save time and produce professional work with our Motion Duck extension. For example, you can easily preview templates from one of our packs and just click the apply button. Then you can quickly change the template parameters and you're done. So if you're looking to gain an edge within your work, check out every template we have for After Effects and Premiere Pro with the links below. Remember, you can download these backgrounds for free, links are in the description down below. Subscribe to the channel for more post-production tutorials every week, and remember, always be creating.